Born would have been a huge success if Charlie Munger had never lived. Wall Street tracks and rewards what I call a locker room culture. There are the people who just have to win at football or soccer or something like that. And they, in the nature, they're just so competitive that whatever A is doing, they have to be as good or better than A. We have the mindset of the person that's buying the whole business at the price you would realize by multiplying the price we're paying by share by the number of outstanding shares. And, and we want the price for the whole business so calculated to look very attractive. So we like buying individual shares at a price that's lower than we think a rational person would pay if he could buy the whole business. But you gotta remember that in our way of thinking, all intelligent investment is value investment. I think it's in the nature of long-term shareholding with the normal vicissitudes in, in worldly outcomes and in markets that, that the long-term holder has his quoted value of his stock go down and then by, say, 50%. And you ought to be able to achieve a lot more when you're given a mighty hand than you were when you start with a little nothing. Now, they won't be able to multiply money as fast per share because that can't happen when you're working with such large sums. But in terms of a creditable institution that serves the wider world, I think Bircher's contribution after Warren is dead will utterly dwarf the contribution made while he was alive. Now, the first rule of fishing is to fish where the fish are. The first rule of value investing is to find some place to fish for value investments where there are a lot of them. And, of course, it's gotten hard in the United States to find easy value investments because the world is so competitive. We have to deal in things that we're capable of understanding. And then, once we're over that filter, we have to have a business with some intrinsic characteristics that give it a durable competitive advantage. And then, of course, we would vastly prefer a management in place with a lot of integrity and talent. And finally, no matter how wonderful it is, it's not worth an infinite price. So we have to have a price that makes sense and gives a margin of safety considering the natural vicissitudes of life. That's a very simple set of ideas. And the reason that our ideas have not spread faster is they're too simple. You can never take all the boom and bust out of a capitalist economy, but they could be enormously dampened if there were wise legislative restraints on human conduct that eliminated more of the sin and folly that will inevitably come without the wise restraints. There are times when even a company as big as Coca-Cola is too cheaply priced by the market considering what it's going to do for the shareholder. And there are times when we can figure that out, and there are times when we can't. And the times when we can figure it out, we tend to go in heavily. For many, many months, we were buying as much Coca-Cola as we could buy, roughly a third of the volume trading, every day for months. So we were very aggressive in buying into Coca-Cola.